Hi, and welcome to the video on how to properly answer test questions in an AP Chemistry class. So these are tips and strategies that are going to be very helpful and very useful as you prepare for your first AP style test. If you notice at the bottom of this slide, there's a website. This is where I got a lot of this information from. It is just some exam tips for an AP Chemistry student. So preparing for the exam. It is very strongly encouraged to study outside of class. So form a study group, maybe you and a few friends, you can create a group chat, but it's very strongly encouraged to study outside of class. If you just try to study in class, you will not do as well as you might think. Um, so, you know, consider studying in groups if you want to work through challenging problems together. Um, just make sure that you're studying somehow outside of class. Um, the night before each exam, make sure that you review the basics, right? Make sure you look over those equations that you use over and over, you know, like the molarity equation um, or finding molar mass. So just make sure that you review the basics and don't try to cram everything the night before because uh, studies show that you will not remember everything that you crammed the night before the test. So multiple choice questions. Um, as you work through these multiple choice questions, so this is going to be the first part, the first half usually, of an AP style test. Multiple choice questions, you want to make sure that you pace yourself. For both multiple choice and free response, you will have access to the periodic table and to the constant sheet that you received, um, but you want to make sure that you pace yourself as you go through. I would recommend using the three-pass strategy. So first, look over the question um, for a maximum of 40 seconds. You might not need that much time, but just look over the question. Then determine the subject, right? Do you know it or do you not? Um, if you can mark the correct answer, mark the right answer. If you know how to do it but you need more time, put a Y next to it. If you have no idea how to do it, put an N next to, the, next to it. This is going to help you with this three-pass strategy. So after you go through that first 40 seconds, you need to force yourself to move through 15 questions per 10 minutes. So this is roughly 1.5 minutes per question. When I give you a multiple choice test, I will always give you 1.5 minutes per question. So if there are 10 questions, you're going to have 10 times 1.5 minutes, and that's going to be your time. Um, as you go through, make that second pass. The second pass that you work through, only focus on those why questions. Um, don't worry at all about the end questions, just focus on the why. And then on the third pass, go through the end questions. If you can eliminate some choices, that will help you. Um, but even if you do not know, guess. They never leave a multiple choice question blank. You are not penalized for guessing. I mean, you're going to get the question wrong, but it's not going to be like the SAT where you lose even more credit. So make sure that you guess if possible. So as you work through multiple choice, remember 1.5 minutes per question. Then we come to the second part, the free response questions. Well, let me back up to the multiple choice again. Um, with the multiple choice questions, you will not receive a calculator. So I'll say that one more time. Multiple choice questions, you do not receive a calculator. So after the multiple choice, you're going to turn in the multiple choice test. You're going to make sure you have your answer sheet and the test turned in. Then you're going to get the free response questions. Free response questions consist of two types. You have the long and you have the short. Long questions are uh, roughly 15 to 20 minutes a piece, um, and then the short questions are 7 to 10 minutes. So on the AP test, you have seven questions. You have three long, you have four short. Um, on our unit tests, it just kind of depends on the unit that we're on um, as to how many free response questions you're going to get. But if it's a long question, you're going to get approximately 15 to 20 minutes. If it's a short one, you probably get 7 to 10 minutes. So with these free response questions, you want to make sure that you read everything. 
So you want to make sure you read the entire question. So read the entire free response question all the way through before doing any work. Make sure that you get all of the information. Okay? Because if you don't really understand what is being asked, you're not going to get the correct answer. Um, a good approach is to start at the bottom and then read back to the beginning just to make sure you know exactly what is going on. So, as you work through these free response questions, be smart about multi-part. So, both types of questions, the long and the short, can have several parts. You want to make sure that you read all of the parts before you start answering and think about how they might be related. Because if you have a free response question, almost always one answer, so let's say part B, relies on your answer to part A. So if any part asks you to answer a question based on a previous part, make sure that you actually use that previous answer. Um, let's say that you don't know how to do part A, but everything else relies on part A. Make up an answer, okay? Because the AP style free response questions are graded conditionally. So what that means is if you get part A wrong, but you do B, C, and D all based on part A and you do those last three parts correct, I will go back and I will work through the math based on your answer to part A and you could potentially still get three out of the four questions correct. Okay, so if you don't know how to do one of the problems, make up an answer and use that throughout the rest of that question. You can ask any of my kids from last year and they're going to tell you that they made up a lot of answers in order to do the rest of some of the problems and that's totally fine. So then the last part on these free response questions is to maximize your credit. So in order to maximize your credit, you need to be specific and you need to be concise. Okay, and make sure that you are using the given choices. So if you are asked to choose the best answer, make a single selection. Okay, and then justify the reasoning for making that choice. This goes to this next part that says explain or justify. Okay, if you have an answer and then it says to explain and you don't explain your answer, you will not get the points. So you need to make sure that you answer every single question. You might have to do some math and then explain or justify your answer. So then you need to go back and write about that. Okay, so make sure that an explanation or justification um, is used if asked. Um, and then we have comparison. So if you're asked to make a comparison, make sure you mention both possibilities, you know, between A and B. Make sure you mention both and then make a single choice and justify why. You'll find that a lot of these free response questions ask you to explain and to justify. Um, make sure that you do that, right? Make sure you answer everything fully. Um, and then with partial credit, um, you know, just answer any part of the question that you can. If you can only answer one of the parts, answer one of the parts, but make a guess for the rest. You can get partial credit. Um, but it's important to try to work through as much as you possibly can. So with the free response questions and AP readers, so the AP readers are those people who grade the test um, over the summer. Um, in the terms of unit tests, I would be that AP reader because I'm grading all of your tests. Um, you need to communicate clearly and precisely. So if you are vague, if you're unclear, or if you're just rambling answers, uh, it's going to be difficult for me to determine if you actually understood it and you probably won't get the full points. Um, if you have something that's strange or that's unfamiliar, right? You have an unfamiliar question, still write something down. Uh, there's a chance that we probably talked about it. This is just asking you to apply something in a new way. So use the knowledge that you have to try to determine what a plausible approach might be, right? So nothing that you put down is going to earn less credit than leaving it blank. Um, for free response questions, you need to use pencil or blue ink, okay? and try to avoid pens that smear. So you can use a pencil, that's fine, um, or blue ink, no other color besides blue. Um, use details, right? Be as detailed and specific as possible, and then once you've answered the question, just stop. 
Don't try to write anything else after the question is already answered. Um, you might need all of the space that's provided. You might not need, you know, half of it that's provided. So don't panic because you haven't used all of the space. Um, but once you've answered the question, just stop. And then finally, some other tips. Um, be consistent. Consistency is very important. Um, consider your prior answers that you used. Be sure to answer the next related question based on those prior answers. Um, if your answers don't make sense, try to rethink it and reconsider what you did. Um, scientific language. Uh, make sure you use appropriate scientific language. For example, don't refer to an atom as a molecule or an ion. Right? An atom is different from a molecule. A molecule is different from an ion. So you have to use correct scientific language. Make sure you know proper chemistry symbols and units. There is a difference, for instance, between lowercase m and the capital M, right? So make sure that you use the right units and make sure that you use units. Um, and then what's trending? So periodic trends are going to be a big, big part of the AP test. So you're going to find as we get into periodic trends that we're going to start talking a lot about how to properly answer um, these questions based on uh, the periodic trends. Um, may the force be with you. Uh, make sure you know the difference in the types of bonds. We'll talk more about those as we work through. Um, and then calculator. Okay. If you are doing a free response question, you can use your calculator, so make sure that your answers are accurate. Um, make sure you know how to use your calculator. Um, be very careful as to what you're plugging in and when. Um, on the free response questions, you have to show all work, even for simple calculations. Right? If you're doing 2 times 2, write it down. You would rather have too much work than not enough. Uh, because if you have a correct answer but you don't have supporting data, or you don't have your work shown, there's a chance that you won't earn all of the points. Um, and then, significant figures, units, and graphs. Make sure you apply the rules for significant figures. Typically, plus or minus one significant figure is okay, but you know, make sure that you know how to use those. Um, don't round before the final answer. I'll just tell you that now. Um, save the rounding for the very end, just because that's going to give you uh, your most precise value and make sure that you include units. Um, if you have to draw a graph, make sure you label everything on that graph as well. So this was test strategies for taking an AP style test. It's going to be very different than what you're used to. Um, so just make sure, you know, look at practice problems that I've given you. Um, it's going to be half multiple choice. It's going to be half free response. Um, if you have questions, just let me know um, and we can go through some of those questions in class.